Hey everybody, Ashton again with Gent Sense. So I was tagged to do this video about a month ago from Timmy from Imagine Scent. His channel is in the description. I haven't meant to put it off this long. It's just I was tagged before I went on vacation and this is the first real chance I've had to do it. So again, I apologize for the delay, but let's go ahead and do the q and I have the questions written down here. What are three reviewers you would like to collaborate with? So I've never been a part of a proper collaboration. I've been part of compilations where I have like a one minute snippet and a greater collaboration. Uh, I'm not necessarily gonna pick just three, so I'll cheat here. Um, Chad from Gentleman's Journey is the first guy that reached out to me. So I'll say Chad, Dan from Mr. Smelly's Cool. I like his videos. Uh, Manny from Cascade Scents. Um, Steven from Red Lessons, Carlos, Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, those are guys, uh, especially Steven and Carlos, that I watched before I even thought about starting my own channel, so I'll say them. Um, yeah, so I'd say those are probably at the, the tops if I were going to make a list, but um, those are just the people that I've had more interaction with. I haven't had any interaction with Steven, it's just I watched his channel um, back in the day, you could say. I don't want to leave out Jeremy. Everybody knows Jeremy. It's just that his channel is so successful in the way that he does everything. I don't think that he really uh, would be looking to do collaborations or even needs to do them. He's successful doing things his own way and that's completely cool. Um, I'll still support him, not that he needs it. Name three retired reviewers you would love to see come back. Um, I really can't because all the people that I watched before I started this are still making videos. Some of them aren't making them as often, but everybody is still at least putting something out every once in a while. Maybe not with regularity, but they're still around. So everybody that I was watching before and watch now are still active. So I can't really answer that one. What are your three favorite designer fragrances? So this is difficult, it's not really definitive because a year from now my opinion could be changed from what it is right now. But at the moment I'm going to say Gucci Envy. It's discontinued, it's getting harder to find, it's fairly expensive at this point. But anytime I find a bottle of this at a decent price I try to pick it up. That way I can have even more backup bottles. I'm almost hoarding it at this point. Uh, Dior Homme Intense, anytime that I dress formally this is what I reach for. It's a dumb reach at that point. Um, I like the iris. I like the powder. I know some people don't. Some people don't like that lipsticky vibe, but it doesn't bother me. And Fahrenheit Parfum. Added vanilla is always a good thing for me. I love the Fahrenheit line, and this is the one that's been getting the most wear from it for me lately. Um, obviously, I still love the original Fahrenheit, especially the ones that have more of that petrol note, but Fahrenheit Parfum is going to be number three right now. My three favorite niche fragrances. Everything I just said about designers holds still with the niche. So we'll start it off with Bleecker Street by Bond Number no. 9. This one is one I love to wear in the spring, the summer. My wife loves it. I love it. I know that Bond gets a lot of hate. Um, they make way too many fragrances, almost one every other month, and a lot of them come across really synthetic. This one, some people will still say is synthetic, but it's a fantastic warm weather scent and one that I really love. It was actually one of the first niches that I ever bought. It's the first one I bought from Bond Number no. 9. Green Irish Tweed by Creed. This is actually the very first niche fragrance I ever, ever bought. I had sampled it beforehand and I loved it, so I had to go ahead and buy myself a full bottle. And at this point, I have three. So, I like it. Um, when I first tried this, I was blown away. Uh, the quality of it, just how it smelled, how it developed, really, really loved it. I know there are similarities, obviously, with Cool Water and Aspen and at this point, Train Away, but this one, for me, stands heads and tails above the others, and I will always, always, always have a bottle of that. And lastly, Field Notes from Paris by Inica. So this is not super well known. Um, I think that Inica actually only has a couple of unisex fragrances. This is one of them. It has a really clean tobacco with beeswax and honey. It's just a great, great scent. 
I can't get enough of it. If for some reason this should ever be discontinued, I will end up hoarding probably three or four bottles to make sure I have enough for my entire life. What are your three favorite fragrance houses? Dior is one of them, uh, the Eau Sauvage line, the Ohm line, the Fahrenheit line, uh, their Privé line. They just have so many great fragrances and I have tons of them. So Dior is one, they just always have great quality. Um, imaginary Authors, I have every single Imaginary Author scent at this point except Violet Disguise. So I'll buy that one here pretty soon and go ahead and complete that collection until a new fragrance is released. And lastly, a toss up between Tom Ford and Creed. I know it's nothing super amazing, uh, but I have tons and tons of Creeds. Like I said, it's like an entryway into niche and they're very wearable, very likable. So I've got a lot of those. And then um, I have a ton of the Private Blend uh, Tom Ford line. So uh, I don't know if I had to pick one and get rid of the others, Ah oh, man, I don't know. I'd probably pick Creed, I guess, with a gun to my head, but that's difficult. What are your three favorite notes in perfume? Vanilla, tobacco, and bergamot. <laughs> bergamot is really nice in uh, summer and spring fragrances. Something about it, I just love the way that it smells. Tobacco, anything that has a good tobacco note that's really rich, um, I get down on those all winter and fall. And then vanilla, I just love vanilla. The, the sweetness, as long as it's not sickly sweet, like syrupy, synthetic sweet, then um, I like vanilla in almost anything. What are three of the most underrated fragrances? That's difficult because that's subjective. Um, Michael Kors, for men, is in my opinion a fantastic fall and winter fragrance with a great tobacco note. It shares similarities with 1821 Man Made, uh, which is funny because that one was getting hyped up like crazy, but nobody seems to care about Michael Kors. Um, Amouage Sunshine, some people really hate that one, but to me it's unique, the Immortel in it is fantastic, and I've worn a decent amount of it. And then lastly, for the heck of it, Coney Island. Um, for some reason, when it comes around to summertime, I end up wearing a lot of Coney Island. It's got a marine note in it, and a lot of people say that it smells kind of funky, uh, that they don't really like it. But personally, I really enjoy it. This is actually my second bottle, so I'm a fan of Coney Island. Um, I have a lot of Bond Number no. 9 fragrances. Uh, they're all in here, I'll show you at some point but Coney Island is one of my favorites. I don't know if it necessarily is underrated. It just seems to be one that a lot of people dislike, um, but I like it. And maybe one more would be uh, Gucci by Gucci, the tobacco base scent. I like that one a lot. The performance sucks, but it's a good fragrance and it never really seems to get talked about. All right, guys, hopefully you learned a little more about me. Hopefully you don't criticize my choices too much. Um, so I'm supposed to keep the tag going, but I am way late. I'm gonna go ahead and tag Joy. I will put his channel below. I don't think that he's been tagged to do this yet. If he has, I'm sorry, and I screwed everything up. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.